Thank you so much for having me. Give me a, uh, just let me know if my sound is off or anything like that. I know we already did a test run, but never know during that break if something went a little wonky with technology. <laughs> Good. All right, well, I'm gonna get started because I have so much to talk about as this is one of my favorite topics, mobility issues, because we see so much uh, mobility issues in our older dogs and cats. And I wanna to present to you a ton of practical tips for home setup. So non-drug um, therapies or, or um, uh, you know, ways to set up, like I say, set up your house to make the pet more comfortable, to give them more uh, mobility options because sometimes they're scared to walk around their house or, uh, or outside. And uh, also just give the family something to do in the home that can make their lives easier too. Because if you've ever had to deal with a, a pet yourself that's got mobility issues, you know the struggles that they can have. And uh, so there's a lot to go over. So without further ado, I'm going to get started because like I said, I've got a lot to talk to you about. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to try to make it as, as easy to digest as possible. So we know that there are three life stages that were talked about in vet school, puppies and kittens, adults, and senior. And we really kind of um, don't really focus on geriatrics. And I just want to touch on that for a second, because if you think about a human, we know that they're senior citizen, and we can all argue on when that, when that time is or what that age is when we become a senior citizen. If we were together, I would ask you, and it would always be um, anywhere around 65, some would say 55, uh, some would say, you know, uh, 50, but um, there's just not really a, a concrete number of when we become senior, but there's something called a, a geriatric syndrome in humans. And it's basically, to keep this very short, is when we're fragile and we've got, um, or we have uh, increased, increased um, uh, risk factors where we maybe need a, to set up our environment different. We may not be able to fight infections off. So I always just think it's, we're, we're in the fragile stage of our lives. And that is usually in humans the last 10% of our lifespan. So I really do think that there's a stage in our life that, that uh, or our pets where they're geriatric. So they just need a little bit more TLC. And if you think about a 10 year old Labrador that comes into your clinic, that's got, you know, maybe a little hitch in their giddy up, but not too many things wrong. And you said, well, he's a senior. They may say, well, no, he's not. He's doing pretty good. Cause we all get a little defensive when, when it comes to age, don't we? <laughs> But that is a very different dog when they come back in at 14, when they've got a myriad of problems. And I call them the jalopies. And they're my favorite kind when they've got a ton of things going on because we can do so much to help them. But these are the fragile dogs. So these are the fragile um, or the geriatric dogs and cats. That's who I'm going to focus on. Uh, although seniors are also included in this. And even younger dogs or cats that have mobility issues. These tips go for 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 all of them. So I hope I can provide you with at least a couple of tips to take back into your practice and share with your, um, with your clients. So what I mentioned that the last 10% of our lifespan were usually uh, considered geriatric or very fragile. So when does a pet qualify? And we have a big problem with our dogs, don't we? Because of the size. And here we've got a, a, a great picture of, um, of a, a Bernese mountain dog and a little chihuahua and there are big differences. So what is their typical lifespan? And that is going to be very different because we all know that the smaller the dog, the longer they live. And um, so we know that, that the Bernese might, you know, on average, maybe 11 or 12 years as their lifespan, where the Chihuahua, they're maybe halfway through because <laughs> we see so many making it to the, to the later teens. But I, um, so what I did is this is just Mary, Dr. Mary's non-scientific way of doing this is I looked at the last or the, the lifespan of the small, medium and large breeds and just knocked off 10% and said, this is when they're starting to have these fragile issues. So a small dog, maybe around 12 years old, we're going to, we're going to start to see some of the issues, uh, you know, bottle up medium dogs around 10 and larger dogs around eight or nine. And then the jumbo guys. So, um, so those super large breeds, probably more around six is when they've, they've become a little bit fragile and very difficult to manage. And a lot of this is about caregiver um, burden that we see. And so what, are, what can we do to help the caregiver at home care for these older, older dogs and cats? Now in 2007, so a pretty long time ago, the AVMA reported that 30% of dogs are over um, six or six to 10 years old and 14% of dogs were over 10. 
So I always say, does the, how does the AVMA know this? Like I never got a survey when I worked in general practice. So I was side-eyeing this because I think that there was a little bit more, but maybe not, I don't know. Um, and then, uh, and then we have to think about our cats. So that was dogs. So our cats, they're different because we don't usually see a, a, um, uh, an aging difference because they're all typically the same size. Although the uh, AAFP reports that cats are technically seniors, 10 years or older, but there are some breeds or genetic dispositions that um, uh, would really, really start that around, around eight years old, but they're pretty, um, they're pretty stable on their, on their sizes. So how many cats are senior citizens? Well, I used uh, Vet Success. They're a wonderful data intelligence company, and they they tap into um, practice management software about, uh, around the country and in, and in Canada. And so we looked at um, about 3,500 clinics all across the United States, 14 million patients. So we looked at a good end value, and we categorized all those patients into the different life stages. And then for some of my euthanasia studies, we looked at 817 pets that were euthanized. And I'm going to tell you one statistic that's um, a little bit frightening. So we broke it down, all those 14 million pets, and the puppies and kittens only make about 12% of the pet population. One year old is 24%, four to six is 18, seven to nine is 18%. And 26% is over 10 years old. So if you remember, um, the AVMA said it was about 14%. So it's actually flipped where the seniors, so just the seniors around seven to, to nine are 18%, but double digits is 26%. So if you think about, you add those two numbers together, 44% of our pet population is senior or geriatric. So 44% is senior for sure, but some of those have that fragile state behind them. And that's a huge pet population. And if you think about so much of our marketing, it's, it's always catered towards adults or puppies and kittens. And I say, I would like to see more weak and wobbly, skinny and stinky, scrappy, and, uh, and those beautiful, beautiful gray muzzled faces on more of our websites, more of our marketing material, because I think, you know, so many owners have those older pets and I think they would resonate and align with the with the clinic that that shows it off. So that's one of your homework assignments is to add a couple of gray muzzles to your marketing. <laughs> You're like, this wasn't supposed to be about marketing, Mary. All right. Now, a lot of people think because I'm an end of life care veterinarian and I've been doing this for about 13 years that I've got to be horribly sad, compassion fatigued out, and that's completely the opposite. I do I have drive fatigue? Yes. Do I have you know other life fatigues? Sure but not compassion fatigue because I love the families that we, that we're able to help and they love their pets. And that just is such an amazing job being an end of life care veterinarian or, or a niche rather. But what I am sad is that when I go to the homes, so many of these families are struggling or have been struggling for years, managing their dog or cat. That's got the, you know, the mountain of issues. Mobility is the number one issue that we deal with at lap of love. And we have the benefit of going into the home. So I see it. I see what they're struggling with. I see their floors, um, whether it's that they, the dog can't get up and around, the cat can't get to their sunny spot, there's urine all over, there's poop all over. It's, um, it's you know, heartbreaking to see. And then when I come in to euthanize this pet, it, that's what would make me sad is that we could have helped them. Like we, I wish they had some education to set up their house a little bit easier. So here's my um, euthanasia stat that I said I would give you. So we looked at 837,000, so almost a million pets across the United States. And we looked at when they were euthanized, were they seen the year before they were euthanized? And that's basically their fragile stage, the last 10%. So just on average, it's your last year uh, or the pet's last year. How many were seen by their veterinarian the year before they died? And so we broke it down into cats and dogs. So 50, almost 59% of cats had not been to their veterinarian the year before they died. And dogs, slightly better, 44% of dogs have not been to their veterinarian the year before they passed. So just under 50% of pets are not seen and we can help them and their families. And one of the biggest things to start with is mobility. So I'm really excited to give this lecture. So with geriatric care, I always say it's not their number, so it's not how old they are, but it's how they are. 
because we could have a 10 year old lab that's struggling with a ton of issues. It doesn't have to be a 14 year old lab. It could be really a six year old lab too, right? So it's um, how they are. Now I want you to have your phones ready because this is, this is like uh, fast and furious. A lot, of, a lot of tips and tricks I'm gonna give you. So you, um, I know that uh, this, this session will be available also on recording, but have your cameras ready if you wanna take some pictures. Uh, if you want a screenshot, but I also have a couple of QR codes that I'm going to um, give to you. So that way you can find some of the products which I'm going to talk about. With that being said, a lot of the products that I recommend to families are easily found on Amazon. So I created a little Amazon shopping page where I was able to collate and put together some of these items. And I've got them categorized into mobility items, blind, uh, you know, vision issues, cognitive dysfunction. Um, stuff for clinics, books. So I've, I've categorized them and I put them in this little shopping page and here's the QR code for that. So all during this lecture, there's only um, two or three products that are not available on Amazon. So I'll let you know that. And it's not that I say, hey, go shop on Amazon, but it's just a, it's just a way to put the shopping list together. And you could go to Target for all I care to go get them. Um, but it's just been really helpful. And I do have to have my disclaimer that I make about 0 0.0001 penny on uh, for every dollar spent, and I donate that all to the Gray Muzzle organization. It's only been a couple hundred bucks, but it definitely goes to a good cause uh, that, that I give back to. So again, the, the most common issue that I see in, in my field is mobility issues. And, and maybe that's because they can't get to the clinics, so they, so they use us a lot, but I know that these older dogs and cats have got some mobility issues. So the common complaint that I'll see is, uh, or hear is that they can't get up, Maybe once they do get up, they can, they can walk, but getting up and getting down is a big struggle. Difficulty on tile floors. I live in South Florida and every home here is either a tile or, or a wood floor. The dog can't get in the car anymore. The cat can't get up to the, uh, their sunny spot. They can't get up the stairs. They, they splay in front of their food bowl. And here's a great example of a, of a dog that's splaying. And guess whose dog that is? That's mine. So this is my girl, Sarissa who had a heap of problems. <laughs> she had Cushing's and diabetes and she had an FHO. And uh, I found her splaying like this. So I was like, uh oh, we gotta, we gotta help get you some traction. And then of course my little kitty cat is making an appearance there. And I will see a wide variety of mobility issues, whether it's weakness because of a neuropathy, like, uh, like gulp in older dogs. And you could just see them kind of sinking in their back end or pain, and I've got this little video. I don't know how well the videos are gonna show, but just bear with me. This is, a, this is a dog that's just walking like a sawhorse, and you see her just struggling to, to just even, you know, to, to go to the bathroom. This dog was only on Tramadol, and if there's one thing I want everybody to look up, it's just the, the, the better pain management available besides Tramadol. And by the time I saw her, she was so bad that, you know, although I tried to hospice her, she was just so difficult um, and the families needed to say goodbye within two weeks. Then again, there is that weakness. And this is uh, Chopper and he had degenerative myelopathy and he just kind of sank to the ground and then picked himself back up again. And what I love about this house though, is there's rugs. And uh, so Chopper had it a little bit easier because the majority of his house was, was carpeted. And then I just gotta give you two examples. This is a little, a, a farm dog at a dairy farm and he was just walking around and when he barked I just knew he had uh, LARPAR and of course with LARPAR we have polyneuropathy and then here's Bryland a friend uh, a friend of mine his dog and I was at their house and I'm like listen we got to do something for this for this long hallway because he's got issues and then another great example here is Maggie she had vestibular issues and you could just see all her muscle wasting and and uh, and just her circling which then you add on mobility issues, it, it's a really hard to, ailment to manage. And I do have to give my, uh, my shout out to my own dog, Sam. Sam has uh, taught me so much as a pet owner with the dog with mobility issues. And she was around 80 pounds, an Anatolian Shepherd. And in September of 2019, I started to see a little bit of a leg tremor. And I just know like a leg, a leg tremor is, is just something is brewing, right? We all kind of know when things, are, when things are brewing, especially in our, old, in our own pets. Sorry, let me just continue here. And my screen has frozen. It's thinking. And it's spinning. So please hold. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's going to restart. Sorry, guys. Not to worry. I can keep on talking. So with Sam, like I said, she, she taught me so much because she was a, a larger breed dog. 
that had some issues. And, um, and it was amazing to see that she, uh, her struggles of getting up. And let me just, I'm gonna share my screen again, two seconds. There we go. Um, and Susan, just let me know if it doesn't come on uh, uh, again. So anyway, I brought Sam because I thought with her sinking, she was sinking in the back end and her leg tremor was getting worse and worse. And she had CP deficits. And I brought her to my friend who's a neurologist here in Southern Cal uh, in South Florida. And uh, he did an exam on her. And she unfortunately had uh, spinal lymphoma. So we did an MR. And so it was just such a... Uh, um, not a normal disease, right? I was really thinking should she had degenerative myelopathy, but she had spinal lymphoma and she would start to drag her little toes and stand on her toes. And so I always talk to owners about this. They, they don't always know how to explain this. They're, they're like, oh, he's, he's like walking on the tops of his paws. And, and, and I just think it's good to have as education to, for owners to look for these things. Or in this example, this is um, Duncan and he had, uh, gulp and his toe would drag and you could hear it on the sidewalk but what's really cool is that you could also see it in the sand and here's another dog an owner sent me a picture of the toe drag in the snow <laughs> so no matter where you live you might see some evidence of a neuropathy going on and then in november of 2020 uh miss sam started to have a bit more uh mobility issues and what i always recommend owners to do is to send in um videos but do slow-mo videos that way we can kind of see that the the dogs um, the dog's toes dragging or whatever it may be. And I want to see videos of where the dog sleeps, where the dog eats, uh, how they interact with other family members in the house and things like that. So not too sure if you can see my little video there of Sam, but, uh, but she was dragging the her two middle toes on the, uh, on the pavement. And that was causing a huge issue because then, she, then it was a bloody mess. And so uh, also one thing that started to happen with Sam was that her tail became paralyzed. And, uh, and, and it would just drag. And so when she would go to the bathroom and she would just walk then forward and her tail would drag into, the, into her urine. And here is something I, I do hope you guys can see this video. This is a cat video. It looks like a normal cat jumping off a bed. However, here's a slow-mo video. And this is what we call the reach down. This cat should jump off without assistance and watch how she actually slowly reaches down and uses that bed just as a, um, you know, just to slow her down as, as, or him down, Sam, as, uh, as he jumps off. So that's why I love a little slow-mo video. Now, there are a ton of reasons for mobility issues, whether it's arthritis or neuropathy, uh, inflammation, disc issues, obesity, muscle wasting. Um, no matter what the, the, the cause is, I'm not here to discuss all the causes, it's how do we manage them in, in the home, regardless of, of the cause. <clears throat> and just a quick aside, the number one uh, risk factor in dogs getting arthritis is weight. And the number one risk factor for cats having um, arthritis is um, age. So basically all old cats are going to have arthritis. We just don't notice it as much. Now, I did want to just touch for one second on sarcopenia because I think it's a disease that people forget about. Um, and that is uh, loss of muscle mass as aging happens. And so uh, it is going to be a disproport or, a, you know, the body fat decreases, uh, or sorry, the, the, the body fat, the muscles, oh, let me get that straight, the muscles decrease and fat increases. And it just um, is something that people forget about. And, you know, there's no pain management we can give because they're not in pain. They're just not uh, as muscular anymore. It's sometimes confused with cachexia. Cachexia is similar where it is muscle loss but it's because of a chronic disease. And this, this guy had uh, cancer and heart failure. So he was a perfect example of cachexia. And with sarcopenia, there's a ton of, of causes. So it's lifestyle, chronic inflammation, obesity, uh, neuromuscular junctions not, not functioning and, and losing them. So there's a ton of reasons for sarcopenia. But one of the things that we could do that could best slow the progression of that muscle loss is working out, <laughs> whether that's a walk or uh, walking up and down some stairs, but physical therapy is, is so key. And here is a wonderful example of this. This is a cross section of a 74 year old sedentary person. And you can see all the adipose tissue around the, the quadricep. And then there's the cross section of a 74 year old athlete. 
So you don't use it, you lose it. And motion is lotion. The best thing for dogs and cats is to keep them moving along because they will, they will, they will go downhill much faster. So I always want to encourage that. And, and I, I don't mean to talk so much about dogs because cats have the issue too. So this is a cat, Saxy, her name was, and she just had such horrible mobility issues and she wasn't able to sleep in bed with, the, with her mom anymore. Um, uh, I made a, a cute little cat osteoarthritis checklist. This was in the spirit of a checklist that um, Zoetis has, but it's really, uh, it's for the cat owners to fill out, but it's in the voice of the cat. So, uh, so many owners, don't recognize that their cat may have some mobility issues or, or arthritis issues. Um, and so it's just, uh, it's just a good way to educate them is to have them fill out these checklists. And a little thing could be noticing fur standing up on their spine. Like owners don't think to, that, that's, that they don't recognize that that's an issue. So again, this is so much about education. Now, how could, what can we do around our house to keep them more comfortable? And it comes down to a lot of traction. We have to make sure that they have good traction. And they're not slipping and sliding all over the place. And there's a ton of products out there that, that I can recommend to help with the traction issue. Number one thing that we can do, and I, and I should be the, 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 the queen of yoga mats, is put yoga mats all around our house. And this is my girl, Sam, the one with spinal lymphoma. And I went to go, uh, I fed her, I went to go feed my other dog and I come back and she's like this in the kitchen. And I was like, uh-oh. I gotta go get Sam a yoga mat. So here she goes on now her yoga mat with the flowers all over it. And, uh, but I can't stop there. You can't just stop with one, you gotta cover the whole house. And so um, there's yoga mats in every you know, store out there, but there's a company called Yoga Direct. Uh, and of course yoga mats all over uh, Amazon and Yoga Direct sells massive rolls of yoga mats. So that way you can cut them based on the house setup. So maybe you're, the, the owner's in a smaller apartment, and they need to, um, you know, cut it a little bit smaller. What about your clinics? So you can have a yoga mat rolled out for your clinics. So what I love about these are they're easy to clean. Susan, I see you coming off of mute. Is everything okay? Well, I just, I wanted to chime in. I'm sorry for the interruptions. Um, someone is mentioning the videos might be giving off a little bit of a weird sound. Oh, okay. I don't have too many left. So okay. sorry about that. This is the, the, the technical age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love, hate, right? <laughs> it's a love, hate. Look at my slides just went wonky on me, but you just keep going. So I'm so sorry about that. Hopefully um, I can't necessarily, I'll try to turn them off, but if I turn off my, my audio, I may not be heard. So I won't, there's not too many more, but this is my favorite video. And this is, I know it doesn't usually have much sound on this one. So I don't know if it's static sound you're hearing. This is Smudge. Smudge is a beautiful Bernie's mountain dog up in Toronto, Canada. Um, she was the, the dog of a very good friend of mine, Faith, up there, who's also a hospice veterinarian. And so Smudge had beautiful wood floors, but they're shiny and slippery. And so let's see where Smudge wants to walk. So they had to set up their entire house with this, with this runway of yoga mats and bath mats. And look at that helped give her that traction. Because if they don't have the traction, then they're not going to walk as much. They're not going to you know, go up and down their stairs as much. And that's then not you know, getting the motion, which we need. This is Cody and Cody's mom covered her kitchen with, um, uh, with bath mats. And what she did is she put them together so they would match and look good because we all need to still look a little bit good. And the only thing I suggested with her is right in front of Cody's food bowl, if you could see it there, there's nothing. So in front of the food bowl, he would be splaying and, uh, and, and getting kind of stuck in that, in that little spot. So we got to cover everything for these guys. And here's just a little video of, of uh, another dog with these um, big squishy mats that you can put in front of your um, uh, surgery table. And I got a little video bomber there. I'm not sure if you can see that. <laughs> There's a company that started, I'd say maybe five years ago, Ruggable.com. And they sell area rugs that can be easily washed. So it's two layers. The bottom layer is this like rubbery mat with some... Uh, I don't want to call it Velcro, but it's like a Velcro. And on top of it, you can put the, uh, the pretty, you know, uh, mat or rug down and it's thin. And so if they happen to soil the rug, you can just pull that top part off, pop it in the washing machine and put it back down. This comes in giant area rug sizes. It has runners. Um, so they're, they're used all over and, and uh, it's, a, it's a really good suggestion for owners, but you have to cover your house. And here's my dog, Norrin, 
a little upset because the whole place is covered now in all these bath mats. And we can't forget about our, our kitty cats. They need it too. So it's not just for dogs. We got to make sure our cats have, have the traction as well. Some other items I would suggest are these like jigsaw puzzles that um, <clears throat> of, of matting. It's usually used in gyms or in um, like children's playrooms and they come in fun colors, but man, these are, these feel great on, on my feet and uh, can really provide some good traction. Don't forget about the stairs. But what I want to say is the stairs may have rugs, but it's always the landing that people forget about. And if you can imagine a dog going down the stairs and they hit the landing, poof, and, and, they, and they slide. <clears throat> so make sure that they put a good solid yoga mat or bath mat. And when I say bath mats we, and, uh, or area rugs or whatever, you have to have the rubber matting, uh, you know, backed, backing rather on one side because there's some, some rugs that are actually more slippery because they don't have any traction to them. So they, they've got to have that, or you get those rubber things that you can get at Home, uh, home Depot to put under the rug. I had a client here in South Florida that had about two or three steps off of their deck and it's so humid here. So it's disgustingly humid and uh, slippery. So their deck, uh, those deck stairs kept tripping up their dog or slide and their dog would slide off of them. So we got this anti-skid or anti-slip skid grip, say that 10 times, um, which is a paint that's got some grit into it. So we painted their stairs with this, with this gritty paint and the dog, it was perfect for their dog. You gotta think outside the box a little bit. And uh, what about some, some grippy things for our kitty cats? Well, look at this little guy. He loved to drink out of the, the, the sink, but he kept slipping on the sink after a while as he got older. And uh, so we put these stickers on his sink for, for a little bit of grip. And they remind me of like back in the day, I'm, I'm an 80s girl and my bathtub had those things at the bottom, like ugly seashell colors or, or shapes. Steps, like I said earlier, can be a hazard because especially with the landing part of it. And uh, I just wanna talk about steps because one step that could be maybe six inches high could actually be really troublesome to some smaller dogs or even larger dogs. So, do, so don't, don't, uh, don't assume that a shorter step is okay for a pet. They may have some struggles. And so you're probably saying, Mary, what is this weird mannequin, fake mannequin leg stepping on this step outside the bathtub? It's to remind you <laughs> of this product. So you can look up um, senior products for, for, senior, for humans, and they're usually made really well for uh, for our pets too. So this is a step, so it's a shorter step. They come in like two to four inches and it's got rubber feet. So that way, if, it's, if a dog uh, or cat needs to step down, it doesn't slide out. So you might say, well, why would I use this? Here's Angel and Angel had a really bad um, hip dysplasia. And this little step was perfect as an intermediate step between going out to her, her patio and then up on her raised canopy bed. How cute is she? And then boop, there she goes settling down into her bed. I was uh, at the oncologist with Sam and this van pulls up, they open the door, they put the step down and the, and the bath mat over the step and out comes their Labrador. I thought these are my people. So uh, maybe this is something to suggest. I was doing a lecture in New York and this woman comes up to me. She said, oh, you know, be, what I suggest are mounting blocks. I'm like, I don't know what a mounting block is. Well, this is something that horse, uh, you know, horse uh, people use if, they, if they're not tall enough to get up on the horse or for children to get up on the horse, really wide steps. And they come in a wide array of colors. And I just thought it was a great idea. So this is good for maybe right outside of the couch or next to the couch or in front of the bed for a pet to get into or if they need to get in and out of the car. And then I keep looking and there's these little toddler steps. So they come in like, again, cute colors and designs. And this 35 bucks and it's easy to use. So there's a ton of steps available for pets, but don't forget to look at, uh, at some other options. And so cats do love to sleep in bed with their, with their owners and, or get up on the couch. And here's just some, some, uh, some pictures of some uh, house setups that are awesome for these cats. So this guy was going up and down. Like I said, they wanna get into their sunny spot. So this little cat, he couldn't get up his um, perch anymore. So we put this stool right in front of him. And then, and then next to that stool, we're gonna put the step with the funny mannequin leg right next to it. 
And uh, so that way he's got uh, intermediate steps up to what he used to be able to pounce up really easy. Now you could also do ramps. Here's a family that put a ramp for their cat right next to their couch. And then just another good example of uh, making sure that their sunny spot is still available. And look at this. This is a, a little stool steppy thing that you can get at Home, Home Depot for 10 bucks. I just love to show examples. And if you ask your families, can you send me pictures of your house or your setup? You will get tons of pictures. How do you think I get all these pictures? Because I asked for them and they're like, well, let me show you this angle. And I just think it can inspire families that have different home setups to come up with ideas that, that will fit their, um, their lifestyle or their, or their place better. So the only thing I would suggest with this is that that end table looks a little slippery to me. So I would then put some rubberized matting down so that way when he jumps down or jumps up, he's not gonna hurt himself a little bit more. And here's an example of a ramp. And I would then, what I would do with this ramp is go get the little strips um, and you can get them at off at Home Depot or on Amazon and they're just sticky strips that's got grit in it. And so then I would just put them up the, the ramp there. Now, to me, the best harness in the world, and I do not get paid by any of the, I don't get paid by any product that I talk about, by the way, but this one is the Help Em Up Harness. And to me, it's the best harness out there. It's probably anywhere between $75 to $125, depending on the size that's needed and worth every penny. It's got a front and back end support. It's got a lot of purchase, so it's not you know hurting their, the dog in a certain spot. And uh, my girl, Sam, she had to help him up harness. And uh, I, you keep it on them the whole time. The sling harnesses are, are really not that great. You gotta be ready to, to sling them and help them. And, uh, and just a little side clinic tip, if you've got a dog with any kind of mobility issue, uh, get a help him up harness in different sizes and, uh, and, they, and, they, and the company will um, uh, give you a discount too. So you can get a couple of them for your clinic. And put them on the dog after anesthesia or before anesthesia, if, if it's not going to get in the way or of, of what you're doing. Because when they wake up from anesthesia and they're a little bit wonky and you have to let them out to pee or go out to the, to the lobby to meet mom and dad, now you've got a harness on them for, for extra safety. And I tell you that the mom or dad is going to want to know where they can get one of those. Um, just a quick, I want you to mental note, you see on Sam on the picture on the um, left, she's got this little pink uh pink thing hanging on her on her help him up harness so that's like a little hair scrunchie so just keep note of her hair scrunchie because i'm going to talk about that in a minute but i always kept this on sand because she would get stuck with her legs up around her ears which is i don't know how she was able to do that and then i'd hear her like and i'd have to go run and get her and just pop her up and pick her up and re you know re um position her legs for her and the help up harness comes in such a small size that we've actually even used it on a kitty cat. <laughs> and so this is the, the extra, extra small that is good for like a Yorkie. Now, what about booties? So there's a, a, a lot of different booties available or socks or paw stuff. And I always say it depends on the disease or the ailment that the pet's dealing with and what kind of traction that they need because they may just be slipping or, but if they're dragging their toes and doing the toe flip, we may have some issues and I'll talk about what I had to get with Sam, but here's my girl Sarissa and I got the booties. I put these booties on her and then I ended up putting the front ones on as well. And after a few donkey kicks, she was totally fine. Um, and here's Reggie showing off his. Now, um, just, I always tell owners, you got to take them off like twice a day, make sure their toes are okay, that they're not tight, too tight. Rough Wear is a product that I, uh, or a company that I love. Many of their products, they're awesome. Uh, but with Sam, and I'll show you a picture, the rough wear booties were a bit too heavy for her. So she was, she was doing the toe drag, right, which, I, which you saw, and um, they would just almost be like flippers. So she was, it was just too heavy for her, and she would trip up. So then I moved to a different booty here. I, I can't remember the name of this. It's in my little Amazon page. But these were just um, much lighter, uh, and, uh, and, and that was a little bit better for her for a while. And then there's a company um, that, called OrthoPets, and they've got this um, uh, booty sling thing that is great when if you've got uh, CP deficits or, or the toe dragging because it is going to keep the, the foot in an upright position. Um, so these I suggest, though, that, that you order and help place and teach the owner how to, how to use those. So, so just make a mental note of that, the OrthoPets. 
And any of these products, you need to measure well. And here is Sam showing you how not to measure. So if you remember when you were a kid and you went to the shoe store, you had to stand up before, before you get measured. So same thing with the dogs, because when they stand, their, their little tootsies kind of expand a little bit. So make sure that they're in a good position when, you, when you're making the marks to buy these, uh, to whatever booties that you're going to buy. So here's Sam. And, uh, and the booties that she has on is the rough wear booties. And like I said, they got a little too heavy for her. So then I eventually ended up with these, the rubber ones, the paws. And I used to think these balloon booties, they're, they're like probably not good. The feet are going to be all yeasty and disgusting. These were a lifesaver. They were light. They're, um, they're, they were a little tough to put on. So I would actually cut a little sliver up at the top just to make it easier to get on. And they would last days. And then I would just, I'm a little OCD, so they get dirty and nasty. So I would throw them out and, and you know, put a new pair on. But it was dollars. Um, so that's what Sam actually ended up using. So just have a number of products available at your clinic just to show the owner. You don't have to sell them, but at least show the owner uh, what their options are. Have something on your website with links to the different products that they can buy. I'm not saying, you know, starting a shopping page, but just have, have the information available, sort of like my shopping page I have. I don't know if you, can, if you notice, but Sam has her help from a harness, and it's a blue harness in this picture. And, and earlier pictures, it was orange. So she started losing weight. She was getting a little cachexic. And so this was her, the, the extra large. And then we went down to large. Um, and I actually first went down to a, a, a smaller size on her hind end because she was losing so much muscle mass uh, and kept the medium or the larger size on her, on her top half. And then eventually we went to the smaller size for all of her. So um, just in case anybody noticed that. There's, uh, there's some socks that, I, that I've used and, and also love. And these are the ex Expolor socks. <laughs> and um, they are sold on Amazon and they've got some, you know, uh, rubbery things, bits at the bottom of the, of the sock and also on the top. So that way uh, you, you could use them if they, if they um, lay, if they sploot. You guys know what, what that word means? When you've got those dogs that, that extend their hind legs out like that, that's called splooting. And then when they get up, it's so hard for them to get up. So if you put the socks on with the, with the sticky stuff on the top, it helps them get up. And they've got this little Velcro strap around it so that way they don't just slide right off. Because socks without a little Velcro, they're just gonna, they're gonna fly right off. So these socks are also something that I've recommended. Gotta give a shout out to another veterinarian and that's Dr. Julie Busby. And she created the toe grips. And these are um, anti-slip anti little rubber, rubber bands, if you will, that, that stick on the end of uh, the, the toenail. So when a, when a pet puts their, their um, weight on their, on their feet, <laughs> the toenails are going to extend and, and, and hit the ground at, a, at a, what, they, what she calls the grip zone. So she trademarked that word. And that is when these rubber um, bands, if you will, are going to hit the ground and, and give good traction. What I love about these and also booties is if the dog shares a home with an elderly person that is using a walker or has uh, needs a cane or something like that, because a walker, you can't have yoga mats all over the house because they need the floors to be slippery because they've got to slide their walker along. So I've had a lot of senior citizens that we've got to make a house set up for a senior dog and a senior citizen. And so these products that you just put on and leave on and, and it doesn't necessarily always need all the other um, matting around the house can be really helpful to, uh, to the families. So here's Maple getting her toe grips put on with a little peanut butter treat. And uh, it's really easy to do. There's um, a met on her website. She's got how to measure and how to put on. And what's great is that if the family is not satisfied, it's money back guarantee, but uh, it's like $25 for a pack of a ton of them. Another product uh, is Paw Friction, and this is a, um, something where you could put, like, it's almost like a crazy glue or a glue on the pads, and then you dip the, the foot into this well of grit, and then, um, then the pads themselves are going to have grit. So some people have had success with this. Again, it's not horribly expensive to try to see, to see what works. And here's Maple getting hers done. And um, what I love is that they have a the little mat down on the table for her, so that way she's secure when she's getting this put on. Another product that I tried with Sam are these sticky pads. There's not a name for them because there's a ton of different people who make these. And again, they're in the Amazon page. And I've got the, the QR code for the Amazon page at the end of this presentation as well. 
But what I did wrong at first with Sam is in this picture where I would put her whole pat her whole foot on the pad, except for when she when she walked, her pads would expand and then the, the thing would fall off. So what I ended up doing was cutting each toe pad off of that thing and putting it on each pad individually. Hope that made sense. Um, I didn't take a picture of, of the end result, but um, but that's and these are like 25 cents or something like that. You get a pack for a couple of bucks and you got sheets of them. And uh, they would only be good for one day here in South Florida, but, but it was super helpful. Now, if you remember, I said that Sam, when she walked, she would drag her two middle toes and it was a bloody mess. It was horrible. And here's a great picture of Sam's little uh, tootsies there. And, uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Because she wasn't dragging her foot too much when she was walking. It was just those toes. So I let her toenails grow out, duct tape, a few other things I had to use. Once they got to a, a good enough length, I then uh, got these nail caps and I put the nail caps on her middle toe, on all her toes, but her middle toe. So that way when she dragged, it was just scraping the, the, the cap and not hurting her toenail. So if you start to see some wear and tear on the toenails from that, put a little nail cap on. Again, pennies, super cheap. Um, uh, the obvious sometimes isn't so obvious, and these do a lot of dogs will have what, what I call Grinch feet, so they've got a lot of fur in between their toes uh, and pads. So I suggest getting a, a cheap thirty dollars cordless beard trimmer and uh, and making sure that they that they shave and, and keep those um, areas shaven because it, it's like slippery socks. Now a lot of times we're going to suggest elevated bowls, especially dogs with front end, or cats with front end issues or arthritis in their in their shoulders or elbows. And I love this idea. However, if you could imagine, I don't know if I'm going to do a sideways profile. I don't know how well this is going to look on video, but and I'm probably so small you can't even see. But if you were to try to lean over, you're actually stretching out your neck and could put a little bit of wonkiness on those joints. So what I love with elevated food bowls are the ones that have a tilt to them. So they just kind of like go right into the bowl. Um, I've really seen only these available in smaller sizes. So medium or smaller dogs or cats. I've not yet seen in mass production a larger food. There's something I could build as a large food bowl that's, that's tilted. Um, but uh, if anybody finds one, please shoot me an email and, and, uh, and that way I could, I could tell the rest of us. But if you're going to do elevated food bowls, I would definitely suggest trying to get them on a little bit of a tilt. And if you don't believe me, here's Lance, and he didn't want to eat his food. But then here's a video of Lance. He doesn't want to eat it. And then here he is eating it once we've raised the food bowl. So, um, so don't, don't think it's, it's just dogs. And here's, uh, here's the example of you could go cheap and just put it on a, on a Rubbermaid. But again... I'd like it to be tilted. So you could put maybe something on, uh, on just under the one side of the bowl to make it tilted. I love these peanut balls. The, this is uh, one I got on Amazon for like 20 bucks because Sam used to keep sinking in the back end when she was standing there at her food bowl and I'm, I'm holding her up and it became an issue. And I'm like, I gotta go cook for myself. So I would slide this peanut ball underneath her. She just would eat and then it was small enough so she could walk off of it and, uh, and be okay. Notice the pink, see the little pink hair scrunchie again on this, uh, on both pictures actually. And here's this little video of her. I'll, I'll just keep going because I know how bad the videos may, may sound. Out and about, I want these guys still to go out and enjoy, smell the roses. And some people may say a stroller is not good for a dog. And uh, I say, heck no, it can be good for any dog. Here's Angel again. She was uh, uh, showcased earlier and the family got her a garden cart. So she would walk down the street to the park Sniff around the park a little bit, too much for her to get home. So in the garden cart, she goes. <laughs> and this is, um, this is a video of a wonderful woman who had a dog with uh, um, uh, degenerative myelopathy. And this is dedication. And look at that. And then she would go out and about with her dog. This has sounds, I'm so sorry, but look at, and she'd go running with this dog. I'm telling you, we have the best, we have the best families. <laughs> and here's just a nice picture. Uh, and he ended up uh, in a little wheelchair. And if you can see the little booties, um, which is always important to protect the feet. 
my neighbor uh, had his dog, Sandy, and Sandy would always go around the neighborhood every single night, but eventually towards the end, it was too much for her. So he bought a golf cart. I think he really wanted the golf cart. And so this was kind of an excuse for Sandy uh, or to get this for Sandy. But it was every night we all went out like the ice cream man was coming around, but it was Sandy. We'd all go out and say hi to her and say, so now you may say, well, what about cats? Cats, some of them don't want to go outside and that's okay. We don't want to force it, but some that do, we can get the backpacks and just like I keep saying, smelling the roses, being connected with their owner, doing something. Owners want to do something and cats and strollers. You may think that's a crazy idea. Well, here is, uh, here is a, a picture of, uh, of a cat, two, two different cats and strollers. And um, Steve actually trained his cats from, from a young age to, to be in strollers and they would go all over with him. <laughs> now I touched a little bit on ramps earlier, but I gotta tell you, just, just you know, ramps are not always easy. And here's Sam and I backed up my car onto, the cur onto a curb so that way the elevation wasn't as steep. And she just gave me the middle digit. She's like, I ain't getting up on that ramp. It's not easy. So ramp training is a whole thing that, um, that you can get into with the, with the pet owner. So instead, I just got her the help mop harness and, and tossed her in the car. It was so easy with the help mop harness. And here's uh, Reggie with his ramp training. And uh, so he'd go up and down with his treats until he learned. And this family built him this ramp. And, uh, and he ended up using it really well but it had, uh, it had a wall on the side so he felt protected and safe. Here's a, a great ramp to get up into the bed. Look how wide this ramp is. That's what I like to see. These, these ramps that are sold are so narrow and it's scary for them. So have the ramp really wide and hats off to this lady who carpeted it in matching carpet <laughs> to her house. And this is a family, we went to euthanize, not this dog, uh, the, the owner's dog. And my veterinarian said, wow, what a, what a cool ramp. The owner's hand, Hand, not handmade, uh, yeah, they made it themselves and ended up donating it to my veterinarian because they, she said that her dog, who's pictured here, had, uh, had trouble getting up onto the, onto the bed. I mean, some people will just do about anything. Now, there's a number of other cool things that we could offer to our families to help with pain and, um, and mobility issues and inflammation, uh, rehabilitation. Sam would go to hydrotherapy uh, during the week, and here she is at her, in her rehab. And, and, and you can teach the owners some basic rehab things that they could do at home. So they don't always have to go to the, to the, um, to the physical therapist or the, or the rehab, but it's not too strenuous. And here's Sam doing some Cavalettis. And notice the Cavaletti pole is, is not high off the ground. It's actually on the ground as she's starting to learn. So I, I love rehabilitation. I was getting certified in it. Here's, uh, here's another video of Duncan. Again, I know my I know my videos are not are not are not showing too well, so I do apologize. Uh, take it from me that they're that they're really cool and uh, and and uh, show. And if you ask owners to show you videos and then you could show them on your website, it's just so great. And now I just want to talk for a second about the Assisi Loop, and that's targeted pulsed electronic uh, magnetic field therapy. And I use it for so many uh, so many different ailments but it's great for pain and inflammation. And so uh, here I am using the Assisi Loop on Angel, who you've seen a couple of times. Remember her stepping down on the step with the weird um, leg. And so we would use that on her front end, which did have arthritis and her really horrible hip. Here's Sam. And um, what I, remember I kept telling you to think about the, uh, the pink hair tie loop scrunchy thing? Well, what I did was I just tied, or I just looped it around the Assisi Loop and on both uh, both ends, so she could walk around with the with the sissy loop uh, hanging on, if you will, to her help them up harness. So you just gotta figure out how to make things work because she would lay in her she'd lay in her bed for hours at a time. But I go to do something like put something on her, and then she's got to get up and walk around. So I beat her to it. And what about rehab for cats? Absolutely, cats can benefit so much from all of these uh, rehab techniques uh, as well. Here's a great video of a cat just doing, doing his exercises and hydrotherapy for cats. Not all cats are gonna love it, but some do. <laughs> now with cats, we do have to focus on their litter box a little bit because this could be a struggle. I love just getting giant uh, Rubbermaid and, and cutting a hole out of it. Some cats don't wanna have a roof on it and some cats do. And I say, let's, let's figure out what, what's important to the cat. If they wanna feel like they're hiding, that's fine. 
but we got to make it easily accessible. And uh, on the left hand side, with the we're looking down, we put the um, we put a, a, a special litter box, which I'm going to show you where uh, on Amazon. And then we just used uh, like kennel pads, wee wee pads, because because the sand was too much for that cat to 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 go through. So, but they're still habitually going to their litter box, and it was a struggle for them. So we just put the wee wee pad in the in the box for them. And here's another uh, box that uh, was for his, his kitty cat. And then we put this pool noodle in it, so that way it was a little bit of a bumper and not um, and didn't you know hurt them as much. Well, let me show you that. There you go. And then here's that easy access litter box that was in that last picture. This is on this is on Amazon, and so it just has uh, a lower front. Uh, there's also some rabbit litter boxes that have the same kind of uh, 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 you know divot, I guess, in the, in the side. And then sometimes we just have to use wee wee pads, and this is a wee wee pad holder. <laughs> that is uh, typically for puppies. And you just, it just uh, is a little contraption that will hold the, the pad in place. And I had, uh, I had actually a paralyzed cat, uh, Goldie, and here she is in her private bathroom. So you can't see her, she's hiding, but she's going to the bathroom on her wee wee pad on the pad holder. And then when she would get off of it, um, it wouldn't then drag with her because it used to drag with her when she would slide off of it. So she was a slider, but she, would, she knew how to, where to go to the bathroom. And orthopedic beds, orthopedic beds are not just for dogs. They're also good for cats to feel, to feel good. And I love everything baby because uh, baby things are waterproof. And so a lot of these dogs and cats have some incontinence and, uh, and they need to be changed, cleaned off, which we're going to get to in a second. But this is a, a wonderful baby changing pad that you can get uh, at a baby store and super comfy for these kitty cats. So I already hinted about incontinence and, and I just want to spend just a minute or two on incontinence because so many of these dogs and cats do have incontinence as well, or they, they don't necessarily have incontinence, but they can't posture outside as well. So when they come in the house and they just got to go because they didn't, they didn't void all that they needed to. And Sam, oh man, Sam had fecal incontinence because of her disease. And um, I can tell you about that. This is just a post, I, I don't have to read it, but man, this poor woman, she's in a senior dog Facebook group and she's just at the end of her rope because of the incontinence. So it's something that we do have to address and educating your families can be super helpful. So uh, with, with uh, incontinence, we gotta keep them clean. So preventing scalding uh, and infection. So shave, uh, there's not, I, I've shaved a, a German Shepherd with, um, Degenerative myelopathy. I shaved basically from belly down because he was just in his urine, laying in it, and it would smell and it was horrible. And his dad actually was overseas; uh, he was uh, in the navy. And I had about a month to, to that the owner wanted him to, to to survive, and he was. He wasn't going to. He, he well, he might have, but I needed a month, and the smell was horrible. So we just shaved him. I love um, uh, baby mattresses, like I also I already said, but. Baby wipes, and this is a baby wipe warmer. So who wouldn't like a nice little warm wipe? And uh, uh, this, is, this is a product, I'm gonna pass through the video fast, but I want you to write this down. It's fourflags.com, and they've got this fleece that basically you can pour water on the fleece or pee or whatever, and, and it will get absorbed by like the wee wee pad that's under it. I'll just show it for a second. And in a minute, it, the wee wee paddle, uh, sorry, the fleece will be dry. So imagine putting that in a small dog bed or a small cat bed or something like that. This is what we see oftentimes going to homes. They'll, they'll be covered in, in, in wee wee pads and uh, owners or, or the, it smells. We got to help them. This is what makes me sad. This owner, this owner loves their dog. Like, and they're, they're going to do whatever they, they can. Here's me. So I already said that, that Sam had fecal incontinence and it, and it was a problem because she would go in the middle of the night and then she'd get stuck a little bit. And so then she had all this beautiful fur and it would get all in her fur and it was so difficult to clean. And then she, it was on the rug and then I'd get in arguments with others in the house. So here's my, one of my um, best used items in my house is my rug cleaner for 200 bucks. That thing, was, that thing stayed out in, in the living room. But I'm going to tell you something that saved Sam's life and that uh, for about four months I did this and I used a Q-tip. You're like, Mary, where's this going? 
Well, I fecally stimulated her before she went to bed and before I went out for a couple of hours. And uh, so all I did was hold up the help from a harness and you just insert the Q-tip in the rectum, just uh, the cotton part. I just did a little twizzle and magically it made, it stimulated her to, to go to the bathroom. Um, breeders do this before they put a dog on a plane. Um, you know, I, sorry, I'm a loss of words, but dogs, like agility dogs and show dogs, they'll do this before they go out on the ring because you don't want them stopping in between. Uh, dogs that are um, paralyzed, their their owners are taught this when you've got a dog that's paralyzed. So say, this was a, this was a massive help for me because cleaning up after her was such a caregiving burden to me that I it was it, it you know I, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. So this this saved her for a few months. I was so excited, <laughs> so excited. I took a picture of her poop. Sorry to gross you guys out. And I already mentioned this a little bit, but remember I said her tail was paralyzed, so she'd go to the bathroom and then walk forward and, and then drag her tail into the poop and pee. And cleaning these guys can be really tough. And that's why I want to use the peanut ball, not only putting underneath them when they're standing, but all, or to support them, but also supporting them when you have to wash. Imagine being solo and doing this on your own, and you've got, this Angel's only 50 pounds, but you know, she was moving around, and so we just plop her over the peanut ball, and there she goes, a little, little booty, <laughs> booty shot there. And I wanted to celebrate the older dogs and cats that, that we see so much. Look at these two, Lily at 16, look at this 18-year-old beautiful girl, and ask owners to send in pictures. These are what I want to see. At least 30% of our marketing should be dedicated to these guys. And uh, look at, I mean, I, I, I get... I get pictures all the time. I want you guys to send me your pictures of your loved ones and celebrate. Look at this big guy at 16. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? We can't forget about the cats. Cats can always look a little grumpy when they're older, but that's okay. So a little note about my girl, Sam. I let her go two Valentine's days ago. So she's my Valentine angel. And when I said goodbye to her, I gave her lots of cupcakes. Uh, and uh, just to show you that, that she was a beautiful mobility dog that are, or, uh, that could actually run and be super happy. So here's that QR code again, just in case you uh, didn't take a picture before because you're like, what is she going to show me on Amazon? Uh, the, the, the things that are not sold is like the, um, the help them up harness is not sold on Amazon. And you know what, guys, I'm not too sure if the Assisi Loop is sold. I doubt it's sold there, but uh, definitely go, uh, so go look on the website for the Assisi Loop. I also use the, the calming care loop for my dog who has separation anxiety. And then I also have uh, a number of books available. They're, they're on Amazon and other online stores. On uh, uh, It's Never Long Enough is my dog book for the geriatric dog. And Nine Lives Are Not Enough for the, for the geriatric cat. And it's got a ton of tips and tricks, uh, starting with the aging process, going through managing your pet, and then also assessing quality of life and euthanasia. And if you want to scan this QR code, uh, put in your email address and you'll get a PDF of my uh, little ebook that's for free. It's end of life essentials that also has a number of hyperlinks to different products and things like that, uh, including my sedation protocol and pain management and things like that. For those of you that, that are interested in that. And there is my social media and my email address. I love old pets at gmail.com.